So, welcome. <laughs> wrap it up. I think the wrap it up B sign is the best invention of layer one 2013 so far. Yeah, yeah. Ultra Proctor mode engage. Uh, we'll, we'll make it in the hardware hacking village for next year. Uh, hope you all had a good lunch. Uh, we're back with Dan Tentler, Yay. aka Viz. Uh, and Dan is giving a talk, but I actually have no idea what it's on because I said, hey, Dan, I, I really need a title for your talk that you submitted. Uh, and he sent me like the weirdest string of characters that just happens to be a sentence. Um, I don't know. I think it's some complicated crypto challenge. But. Without further ado, Dan Tendler. Thank you, sir. Could I even wear my hair down like this? Yeah. I should be the effeminate German guy for the rest of the talk. No, no, maybe not. I don't know. All right. So, I should. So there's still like I guess there's still people filing in. Maybe somewhere. I don't have my glasses. Um. Anyway, whatever. So like, there's always that like first two minutes of the talk where nobody, where people aren't here yet and they're rushing. So like I figured I'd start by. Uh, uh, copying Zaz and saying like, oh, here's a little two-minute story or whatever. So, um, a month, two months ago, I was in Amsterdam um, presenting a similar talk at Hack in the Box, and um, the way, essentially, the way that I learned Python was by finding a blog post, which I'll talk about later, and sort of grafting bad my bad Python onto the author's good Python, and uh, the result was finding absurd, ridiculous amounts of webcams on the internet. And uh, I perpetually run these things over and over again because things like DHCP knock old cameras offline and put new cameras online. And uh, one of the things I found was this. And I was looking at it, trying to figure out what the hell it is. Because when I found it, there was somebody's face in it. Like, the majority of the frame was a forehead. And it took me like a good 30 minutes of just staring at it saying, what in the hell? hell is that? Why would somebody walk up and put their face in a camera that's like obviously in like a public area? Why would that? Why? Um, and somebody looked over my shoulder and said, um, in the bottom right hand there, hold on, I'll get my glasses, it says like F, F10 ATM. And I'm like, oh crap, it's an ATM camera. I found a camera that somebody literally like duct taped onto the top of an ATM and it's in Italy. And it's in some public area. And you can watch people walk up to this ATM and like, do their transactions. And I'm like, that's, a, that's amazing. Who in their, who in their infinite wisdom and, and you know, genius decided it's a good idea to take a camera, attach it to an ATM, and then put it on the internet with like, no authentication? Yes, exactly that. Power Rangers. Um, yes, go, go, Power Rangers indeed. So um, that being the case, without further ado, today I present the architect's room. What happens when Neo isn't getting lectured? Um, and this is sort of a call out to the first time that I ever ran one of these scripts, because that's essentially what I saw. Um, a gigantic wall of several thousand live streaming webcams all at the same time. So if you ever want to make your upstream provider cry, just, I'll show you how. So today, we get to be this guy, except a little less creepy and hopefully not quite so old. So who am I? I'm basically this guy. Um, an obnoxious Europhile who isn't real, pretends to be French, claims to be an information dealer, condescending, arrogant, conceited, but married to an imaginary Monica Belushi. Whatever, close enough. So, what am I doing here? Uh, in the early 2012, I found this blog post by Console, called Console Cowboys, and it talked about um, finding an old beat up camera in a box in this guy's garage, and he said, what the hell, I'll beat up on it, see what, see what I can do. And um, he basically, went to the manufacturer's website and he downloaded the firmware and then he unrolled the firmware you know, using a tool called Binwalk and also by hand and discovered that and you may, maybe some of you have saw the, the news about this because it was covered by BBC and a bunch of other publications um, there is an anonymous way to access the video feed for the TrendNet cameras regardless of whether or not the operator has turned on authentication like, if you go to the IP address of one of these cameras and do slash Anani, like A-N-O-N-Y slash MJPEG.CGI, you get the video feed for the camera. So it, basically what it means is if you have one of these cameras connected to the internet, anybody can look at your camera. So if anybody remembers this, this is uh, essentially what it looks like. This is just a very small screenshot. But imagine that, five cameras wide, like 4,000, 10,000 cameras deep. Um, so this is the first thing, the first thing that happened. Um, I, I <laughs> jokingly published the, the URL to that feed on IRC, and a lot of people had a lot of laughs. It was a good time. 
Um, and then a month later, the BBC found out about it, and um, the, what they read was the stuff that made the paste bin, uh, that made it to Pastebin that described um, crazy people on 4chan and other people on the internet being creepers and like finding naked people and babies and all sorts of stuff um, on, on what I would argue are the far less interesting cameras. So the most boring thing is babies. Who here in the room has kids? Never put your kids on camera, please, dear God. They are boring as hell. Please do not buy a camera and point it at your child. A third of the cameras I find on the internet are like baby monitors or like in a living room. Don't. <laughs> just don't do that. For one, it's boring, and for two, it's just creepy. So before you flip out, however, this story came out just a few weeks ago. Uh, somebody that was hilariously doing the same research as, as me um, was watching a camera where there was, it was like a hospice or a hospital bed of some kind. Um, a, a person that's um, essentially bedridden that was under 24-hour care um, was essentially being beaten by the person that was supposed to be taking care of them. And somebody who was in a position like myself was watching the camera and saw it happen. And so this person flipped out, did a whole bunch of OSN, identified those people and it identified like where the camera was and tried to call the police. The police said, eh. And this person said, are, are you fucking kidding me? Like I'm watching, I'm watching, you know, a beating happen. Like this is essentially, it could be a felony. Like I'm watching this happen live on camera right now. And they said, meh, not our problem. So he said, all right. And he called the press. Press got involved, and then the press came down on the cops, and then they chased these people and got the, you know, there was some lady, and I guess it was like, she was a social worker or something, and it was her mom, and I don't know, there was some weird relationship there, and there was beating involved. Um, but yeah, so this is a case of a dude watching a camera on the internet actually saved somebody. So I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's, I, I, those are, these are stories that don't make it to the news very often, so I figured I'd highlight that. However, there's a flip side. This guy, you guys know this guy, right? This guy called the press first, and now he's in prison. Of course, he had an entirely different approach, but interesting thing to say, right? If you call the press first, you're going to get results. If you call the cops first, they'll ignore you until you call the press. But the order is fine. So anyhow, let's get to the meat, as it were. Anybody uh, recognize what that might be? No? Is that House of Ill Repute? <laughs> it is not the House of Nutrients. I can tell you that much. Um, it's a porn star. No, it's not in. It's not in. It's in, not in Japan. It's in San Diego, but yeah, this is a, a an adult store that has their March Network's DVR system publicly exposed to the internet. Rad. So why webcams? Why? What's the big deal? Like, why would I spend so much time? Because you know, at some point, you're looking at the same stuff over and over and over again. You may see you know a neat camera every once in a while, but like most of them are like in other continents. They're dark. Um, they're looking at an empty garage or a, a ceiling fan or it's in a lit room pointed outside of a dark window and the camera can see a reflection of itself. It's just silliness. Like, why? Because math. Um, there are many different brands of these things and some of them are a lot more prevalent than others. Um, this sampling alone, just with these, what, six, seven camera brands, is 912,000 endpoints. This is almost a million just with these, and there's more. Um, so like the first search result, the server result, uh, BOA 0.93.15, 540,000 endpoints, just with that single server string alone. This is, this is your, gonna be your daily dose of meta. This is a camera in the office of the company that manufactures that camera, <laughs> pointed at, the guys who work on the PCBs that go inside the camera, I'm watching them with. And what they're holding in their hand is the weather dome that goes underneath, you know, on the bottom of the camera to protect it from the weather. You can watch this guy read his mail. Why? Somebody, somebody consciously made the decision to put a camera in an office and point it at somebody's desktop. And this has been this way for months. It's still up right now, I guarantee you. Also, the other like dozen cameras these guys have are all pointed out one person's window at the same patch of parking lot, which is really weird. And they all have individual IPs. I don't know why. This is a screenshot from what I had up earlier. This is that Italian ATM. Um, this is a screenshot that I took while I was in Amsterdam. You can watch people walk up and put their face in the camera. That was interesting. I had to, why do people put their face in the camera? That is so strange. The rubber goods section of the, uh, of the porn store. Anybody read that sign? That little blue sign, like center frame? Browsing time limited to 20 minutes. 
you can only spend 20 minutes in the porn magazine section. Good to know. Also, because with a million endpoints, a million plus endpoints, they're an excellent cross-section of the type of security that you can expect from people that manufacture stuff for public consumption. Generally speaking, these, these cameras are designed to be purchased and attached to something and there's like zero config. You plug it in, you point it at something, and that's what you get. Unfortunately, when you follow that sort of rhetoric, then I'll find your camera and then you'll end up in my talk and it'll get gross and don't worry. Um, so I found all these using Shodan and I've done a lot of talks um, on Shodan in the past. But finding these things isn't exactly what you would call, or what you would uh, call straightforward. Um, you have to basically learn to fingerprint things because you can't just go on Shodan and search for webcam. Well, you can, but you're not going to get precision results. So basically, what I have to do for every one of these findings is fingerprint what it is that I'm looking at. So in this case, um, I'm just doing straight text HTTP fingerprinting. I tell it to port 80, I do get slash HTTP 1.0, enter, enter, and it'll return something. Uh, in this case, a camera in Japan, that is that BOA 0.920, uh, and you can see hilariously it's an O, not a zero at the end of that server string. Um, but that's what we're looking for. We need something that is unique um, uh, to that brand uh, or unit, but not so unique that it's an individual thing. So basically, this string will yield one model of a particular camera. And in some cases, you'll find a several hundred. In some cases, you'll find several thousand. In other cases, you'll find half a million. So it really sort of, it's all over the board. So you have to know kind of what you're getting into. It's kind of a weird reverse logic from what normal people are used to. Like, you can't go to Google and search for this stuff necessarily, because Google spiders pages, but Shodan will give you these uh, HTTP headers, and that's, that's what you'll see in Shodan. So um, basically, that's the secret to Shodan. That's how you find things, is if you have access to something, you get an HTTP fingerprint or a Telnet fingerprint, and then you search for that. So it's not super straightforward. So all of these cameras are actually public? Yes, absolutely they are. Um, here are some of the issues that I found with the cameras. It's a short list, but this is pretty much prevalent across all of them. Um, either no authentication at all, uh, direct object access, which means like what I, what I described earlier with the TrendNet cameras. If you have auth on the camera, um, but you know the path to the camera's feed, you can hit that feed directly and look at the camera. Um, shared code base, for example, if you search for the word author on Shodan, A-U-T-H-E-R, misspelled, um, some guy named Stephen Wu decided that he was going to forever immortalize himself into a bunch of server headers and little cheap Chinese print servers and uh, webcams. And D-Link, Airlink, and I think, I can't remember if it's TrendNet, but there's three or four different brands of webcam that share this code base. So if you search for author Stephen Wu um, on, on Shodan, you'll find several hundred thousand potentially units, things, results, and uh, some of them are print servers, others are cameras, others are LAN, other things. Anyway, but yeah, so a shared code base, you'll find like, and if that code base has a problem, then all these devices have the same problem, right? Poor obfuscation, where, uh, for example, it's an ActiveX camera or a Java camera, or a, it'll pop a Java applet. Um, you can just look at, like, if you pop open like, HTTP Fox or just, um, uh, in, in you open up Chrome developer options and you can watch all the HTTP requests, it'll show you where the Java applet is going to get the camera feed. So you can just go there directly. Um, shared path or file name, same sort of deal. Um, most of these cameras run um, MJPEG, which is a motion JPEG. It's basically, they give you a JPEG a couple of times a second and the, and the, the frame refreshes itself over and over and over again. So uh, most of them are, the file name is MJPEG, like JPEG or JPG.CGI or video.jpg. It's all very similar. So there's three or four you can try if you can't find it directly. Um, so easy mode, right? The camera gives you a Java applet. Java, app, Java applets for anybody that hasn't tried this before are basically zip files. So you download, the, you, you download the Java applet, you unzip it, and it gives you a bunch of files, and then you run strings on them until you find a path that's interesting. It's really simple. Oh, look, you hit the URL stream, right? Cam wants a login, cool. Find another cam that's exactly the same camera that doesn't have credentials. Get the stream to the, uh, get the, stream to the video and then try that URL, or that path, I should say, on the camera that does want credentials, and boom, you're in, right? So, or maybe they're doing their homework at least a little bit, and 
you can't get in with those methods. It actually does want uh, credentials and, and uh, defaults aren't working. So you go to the manufacturer's website, you download the firmware, and you run Binwalk on it, which I have to say, the guy that um, develops Binwalk in the last year has made it really, really, really awesome. Because the first time I tried doing this two years ago, um, Binwalk was kind of a pain. I'm not one of those ninjas that can just open a file in VI and look at the header and immediately say, oh, this is like an MPEG-4 stream. Or, uh, you know, zip files are easy to recognize, JPEGs are easy to recognize, but there are some things that you find that aren't. And unfortunately for me, I'm not one of those guys that can just eyeball it. So um, the original version of Binwalk, you had to carve files out yourself and you had to specify uh, offsets and links and things like that. And I would always get it wrong. So uh, the archives that came out were always broken and I couldn't uncompress them, so I couldn't get it data. So for MIPS file, systems, uh, MIPS file systems in particular, this was a pain in the ass because um, if you want to do it by hand, uh, you have to do this weird memory mapping thing when you're mounting MIPS because of the way that the uh, file system is structured. Uh, and I was never able to get it right. But fortunately, the new version of Binwalk, it's a one-shot go. You just, you know, Binwalk file name and it, you give it dash E and it will carve out everything and dump it all into a directory and it will even uncompress MIPS like LZMA images into a straight up like SquashFS file system. So you'll see, oh, hey, look, here's the file system to some, what's this, a VivoTech camera? Yeah, this is a VivoTech camera. That's cool. What's the anonymous directory for? Hmm, right? So immediately, like, there's, there, you're getting payout. So Binwalk is amazing for this. And this is a screenshot of it, like, running on the VivoTech firmware. Um, it'll scan through uh, the compressed uh, file. It's usually, like, .bin or some custom thing. But what they tend to do is they, they take a bunch of files and they squish them all together into something essentially like tar. And then the installer knows the offsets of the bytes in the file for where to carve it to pull out certain, like the kernel images and the disk images and other bits of the file system, things like that. So here's um, Binwalk finding a bunch of GIF files and uh, an LZMA archive. So it'll uncompress and it looks something like this. And it looks kind of silly uh, because what you're looking at is these serialized numbers, and, or uh, num numbers for file names so that there's, you, they're unique. But all these .7z files are essentially the same file, so sometimes Binwalk chokes a little bit. But that's cool because the files um, on the right over there, the C10, oh, that, that's the firmware, C10A v something dot US, US at bin, uh, the install.inf and the two OCX files there, that's what came out of the zip. And if you just run strings on those OCX files, you can find a bunch of stuff. So I did. And I spent 15 minutes parsing through the guts of these files and looking for readable text until I found this server string. This is how this device um, acknowledges itself to web browsers that connect to it. Right? It says server embedded slash 1.0 UPnP 1.0 IP camera 1.1. OK, that gives me something I can search for. So I searched for it and I found 6,000 of them. Sweet. So it's, that's, that's how you do it. That's the one, one two punch. Right? So there's a million webcams out there, but they're all horrifically insecure, but so what? Like, who cares, right? Oh, look, I can look at somebody's dark garage. Yay. They're actually Linux boxes. And if you, if, you, if you feel so inclined, you can actually own them and use them to pivot into the remote network. Um, one of the talks that uh, I, I got the pleasure of seeing in Amsterdam was these guys. This is their um, GitHub repo. They wrote this tool that will basically point it at a FOSCAM. If you guys ever heard of FOSCAM, it's one of the one of the uh, larger, like if you search for NetWave IP camera on Shodan, there's hundreds of thousands of these, and they are very, very vulnerable, and they're running a MIPS, Linux-based embedded file system, and you can very easily compromise them, gain control of them, and now you essentially have a tiny little, like who needs a Pwn plug, or who needs a Raspberry Pi? You have 540,000 of these things on the internet that are already like powered and connected to the internet, like botnet go, right? Um, so here's some examples of the stuff that you can do that was, this is a slide that I uh, unharmoniously ripped out of their talk. So sorry, guys. But yeah, um, some ideas, right, for 540,000 uh, Linux boxes directly connected to the internet that are both IP surveillance, uh, IP surveillance hardware and a Linux box you can use to pivot. Well. Cool. So now we're, you know, we found a whole bunch of these things. What can you, what can you, what can you do if you search for Shodan, or you search on Shodan, you find half a million results? What do you do with half a million results? How do you quantify that? Like, 
What do? Well, I published a script to GitHub earlier this year, uh, which is the Turk script that I've been using to harvest these cameras. And you can go to my repo. It's github.com slash vis. It's in the eagle eye repo. It's shodan-turk.py. Steal it. Um, get yourself a uh, API key from Shodan and begin searching for stuff and harvesting things. So this is basically like a an if-then kind of thing where you give it a, a search query. In this case, I'm searching for VivoTech. And then the get string is asking for slash cgi-bin slash video.jpg. And if the script gets a 200 OK, that tells the script what you're looking for exists. And then if you get a 200 OK, then basically wrap image source tags around it and write it to a file. And it yields this, uh, except in huge, huge, huge quantity. Um, in fact, let me see if I can give you guys a demo. I have sacrificed 10 dozen goats to the demo gods. So let's see, let's see if I did it right. Goat sacrifice, hopefully you are all for naught. Not all for naught, but it looks like that, right? So this is um, access cameras, I think. But yeah, so like you can zoom way out and see more of them, right? Yeah. So yeah, wall of cameras, architect's room, crazy shit, right? But you see a lot of dupes, right? Oh, you see those? See that parking lot in the middle? That's that company. Oh, wait, hold on. I got a treat for you guys. Where's my cursor? That guy right there. Oh, come on. Where? Open in new tab. Oops. Oops, look, somebody's office. Hey, what's a QR code? I've tried decoding it. Like the bottom left hand corner is missing. But yeah, this is live. This is a live webcam on the internet in some business, like pointed at a desktop. No auth, no creds, nothing. Hey, I never noticed those before. Good eye. There you go. So, like, rad. Yeah. And, and, and this is absolutely a rabbit hole. If you, you do this, you will stay up till five in the morning, I promise. Like, you'll get... So it's a point, right? Why bother? Why do all this stuff? Well, the point is that vendors know that this is a problem and they just don't care. The people that manufacture these pieces of hardware will happily sell you a $30 camera that you will put in your home or in your business and attach to the internet, and then assholes like me will find it and put it in a talk. Um, they don't care. And, and no amount of asking them nicely, no amount of responsible disclosure, no amount of CVEs and advisories will get them to stop. Because we've been doing it for at least 20 years and it hasn't changed anything. They won't fix it because it costs money and they don't like to pay. And it's not worth it, worth it to them unless they're pressured. So about that wall of cameras, right? This doesn't scale. Like, not only will it murder your browser and your downstream, but it takes like an hour for all the cameras to load. And the, and the browser doesn't know how to deal with like 4,000 live streaming MJPEG feeds. So yeah. I had a friend help me out. Um, he built this thing for me um, on Friday, actually. Um, we basically have kitten war for webcams. Anybody know what kitten war is? Kitten war. Well, there's kitten war for webcams. It is live right now, a10labs.com slash cam war. Go there. V view, rank, rate cams. Go play. That, on the left, is somebody's IDF. That is a rack of equipment that some company somewhere in the world is monitoring with a camera that anybody can look at. And that, on the right, um, after a little bit of research, looking up the IP and other things like that, is some college somewhere that is demoing um, smart grid technology. Neat. So everybody, go play. Thank you for humoring me and letting me come up here and jabber you guys for 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, I'm open for questions if anybody wants to throw stuff at me or, or fire away. Okay, so you were talking about the cameras uh, near the ATMs. In reality, uh, what proportion of these do you think are maybe set up by skimmers and what proportion are actually ones built into the ATMs for security? Well, to date, I've only found, okay, so the question was, um, the ATM cameras specifically, how many do I think are, are um, uh, set up by skimmers or other criminal types, and how many are put up by people that are just trying to monitor the ATM? Well, so far, it's a little hard to judge, because considering I've only found one. Um, but the one that I did find that I had up earlier didn't actually, it wasn't pointing at the 
keypad. It just, the only thing that you can discern from that video feed is that there is somebody using the ATM. Like the, the, the camera itself, for all intents and purposes, has nothing to do with the ATM other than its geography and the fact that it appears to be sitting on top of the damn thing pointing at the people that are using the ATM. So um, my guess, if I had to guess, is that it is, uh, the brand of camera that it is, is that same brand that is the, the, the office that has the meta office with the camera that builds a camera, it's those guys. And those are not cheap cameras. So my suspicion is that bad guys probably did not go and buy a really expensive IP camera to hide in an ATM and not gain something from it. So my suspicion is that it was like a, a bolt-on measure by whoever's operating the ATM to see if somebody will drive a truck up, and this has happened before. This is how you, <laughs> one way to steal ATMs, like if you're not a, a lockpick ninja and you can't break into the ATM, then you drive a truck up, you know, backwards to the ATM, you put a chain around it, and you drive away with it, and it leaves sparks and scrapes on the ground, and then you, yeah, you egress with the ATM. So, uh, yeah. Short version, probably not a bad guy. Anybody else? Questions? No? Hate mail? What do you do to make the webcam secure? What do you do to make the webcam? The question was, what do you do to make the webcam secure? Um, the easiest way, put it behind a firewall. Put it behind a VPN. It's fairly brainless. Like, if you can get to the webcam, I mean, assume that it's insecure. Like, what do you do with other insecure devices? You put it behind, you put it in a DMZ, you put it behind a, uh, a VPN, you could, for, for example, you could put it behind Nginx or Apache and use reverse proxying and turn on forced um, eight, like force HD access passwords. You can do like basic auth, for example. And then to that end, if you felt it, you know, you really wanted to go that far, you could do the same thing uh, with having it talk to LDAP, for example. If you had like an LDAP server or a directory of some kind and you had a group, like a security group that was uh, allowed to look at the camera, you could do reverse proxying with Apache and tell it anybody coming to like blah, blah, blah com slash camera is prompted for authentication. And that authentication goes to like Active Directory or LDAP or what have you. Um, and you could wrap the camera with something a little bit more secure. More questions? No? Yes? Yes? No? Sweet. Oh, go for it. Have you ever found um, intimacy happening on a webcam? No. <laughs> no, I found people sleeping. Um, I have found a lot of, like, hospital beds. Like, I don't know if they're hospices or hospital beds. Um, earlier today, it was kind of gross. I found uh, what looked like a, um, what's the word? A, a dude that was like in a coma, that was like vegetable, um, con kind of con con contorted up like this, lying, and I guess like his aide was watching him, like there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like sexual in any way, it was like maintenance. Uh, that's the closest I've ever seen to like naked stuff. Apparently like uh, a year and a half ago, uh, some people that have far uh, less of a life than I do, who were sat and watching cameras for a long period of time, caught some people doing something but it's only a story I've heard. The vast majority of the cameras are horrifically boring, um, particularly the ones with babies on them. So, yeah, that's true. There was a lot of, and this is really weird and I can't figure this out, a lot of people put these cameras in their living rooms. So like the cameras sat to the right of their entertainment system pointed directly back at them while they're in the couch and there was this huge fat guy and he was like pretty much naked watching, um, some television show, I couldn't see the TV. And like his cat was walking all over him and the, the cat's litter box was on the coffee table and I'm like, what? What the hell? Yeah, yeah. It's... Shirtless, with Box his boxes, watching yeah. TV. So, public webcams, right? So, it's, you have to take the good with the bad, right? So like once I'm like, sweet, I found a power grid and oh God, this dude, oh, my eyes. So, I, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sampling from the whole internet. So you gotta take everything. That's a really good question. Uh, the question was, how many of these devices do I think are behind, actually behind a firewall and are, are vulnerable because they are communicating using UPnP and UPnP has opened the firewall port? I would argue probably very few because it's port 80. Like, UPnP, I would, I would imagine, like, I'm, I haven't used a lot of UPnP, but I would imagine UPnP doesn't operate just on straight port 80. It might, but that's actually a good research point. I should look that up. That's, that's, that's a good one. There's another question in the back. How much analytics am I tracking on these cameras? Um, virtually none. Uh, a lot of them are on links that are managed by DHCP. So if I run a scan, 
like yesterday during talks, I was running a scan and I let it run for something like three hours. And just for the top two webcam brands, I found something on the order of 13,000 cameras. Uh, if I were to put it on a server and let the script go overnight, I would probably be able to populate cam war with something on the order of between 40 and 100,000 webcams, essentially depending on the day. Um, the vast majority of them are on DHCP networks. So it's literally luck of the draw. It's hard to track that. I would have to invent a system that would look at the content of the camera and somehow fingerprint it to, to make it unique. So if you want to work on it, rad. Like I, I've, never, I've never analyzed a, a picture uh, that will change. Like sometimes it'll be daylight and you'll see a living room and sometimes it'll be dark and all you see is like the clock. So how do you quantify that? What do you do? There's a lot of really nut, neat stuff you could do there uh, that I don't know how to do, but it would be really cool to try. So if anybody wants to, to work with that on me, that'd be rad. Anybody else? No? Sweet. Well, I guess I'll give you, get, get you guys back like 10 minutes of your day. Thank you very much.